the production of the album how to like some like some laws like the uh, something different from what you have done in other discs? Yeah, I think so. You know, I mean it was um each time going into the studio <coughs> try to to react to this the, the previous record. So we go Battle for the Sun, what are we doing that one? Alright, let's do something different. Battle for the Sun, big heavy loud drums, big heavy loud guitars, that was great. This time, let's simplify, let's throw in some old, really old synths, like old school synths, throw in some uh, really old guitars and stuff. Well, hey, let's mess with these electronics as well, let's bring in an iPad. You know, Brian had his iPad, messing around, making all these cool little noises, and we take them, cut them up, and make little loops out of them. You know, it was it was a this time around working with Alvin Noble, the producer. He did a really good job of pushing us gently out of our comfort zones. You know, pushing against that wall until it kept, like, collapsed. Um, it was a discovery process. We didn't mean to, to make a record. We were just jamming. We were originally trying to write a single for for a, a certain else a different project we were doing, and it just developed. And we had this bunch about five songs, and we well, okay, it looks like we're making a record. And we just kind of did it as it felt good. You know, we just spent some time in a room together. You know, we sort of went in Sp we were in Spain and just in this house for months and months. Just every day we'd come in. Who's got an idea? And everyone would just pick up an instrument and just, hey, anything goes, anything, you know? Uh -huh. Start playing, oh, that's really cool, and start jamming. And it was it was really organic. I think in the, in the past, you know, um, there'd be maybe demos or sort of acoustic songs and kind of ready. And this was all completely from scratch. And I think because of that, we got a really unique result. We got really, the dynamics in the record really kind of big up and down. You have Love Like Love, which is, you know, big festival, dang, 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 which is great. I mean, when we first wrote that, that riff, it was just like, <gasps> we kind of stopped playing. Ah! You know, we grabbed the instrument. <laughs> I mean, that's exactly, the way it sounds now, that's exactly the way we wrote it the first day and we did it. Um, and then you have, you know, you all the way across the record to Bosco, which is, which ends the record, which is a very beautiful piano song that Stefan Old's dog wrote. And, um, and Brian um, sang over and uh, an absolutely beautiful, beautiful track, you know, sort of beautiful melancholy. I think we're very good at that. <laughs> um, the creative curators of, uh, of fine melancholy. But yeah, it's, that was the basic of the process and a very long answer. So. <laughs> Social media, and internet, and too many friends. Uh, how was the songwriting? Well, the songwriting for for this is uh, like I said, this we, most of about ninety percent of it was. I think there was about two or three songs. Yeah. Brian wrote that we stripped down and made into placebo songs. I think he was wanting to do them for a solo thing or something. Um, but everything else was completely organic out of jam. Just, just. Like I said, we just kind of created and just sort of built it, built it up as we go. Um, Brian writes all the all the lyrics. Brian writes all the melodies. That's that's the lead singer's job, and uh, and he's very good at it. So <laughs> so you know you're not gonna you're not gonna be like hmm, maybe I'll write this one. Nah, you're right. You're better with words than I am, mate. <laughs> so but that's kind of kind of yeah. That's the nutshell. You know the things we don't really have a set way to write. So it could be one of things. It could be some, you know, something that's premeditated, or it can be just like organic. And, and this record, you know, lent more on the just from, from scratch. Uh -huh. um, how did the idea of visual production for the tracks of this album, like your participation in fashion design? Yeah, you know, um, Ivan, who who, who uh, is our, our sort of head of lights and stuff like that. He comes up with these concepts, and he, he's, a, he's a, just an absolute madman. Um, he's an Italian, a little Italian guy, he's not that little, but he's an Italian bloke that um, he comes up with all these visuals and all these concepts, and he's listening to the record, and he's making it, and he comes to us with all these different visuals, and this is what I'm thinking. And he's an absolute genius, you know, that, that's, that's from his, his mind, you know, and we always love what he does, and it just fits so perfectly with the music that we don't really need to do much, it's like, we'll leave it to you. Um, because you know we are we're a band that loves presentation, very theatrical, um, and we love to give you a great record and give you a great show, and you know we're in play well and have visuals, and lights, and everything nice and just perfect. You know a very um, well-oiled machine, and, and the visuals are a big part of that. Visuals. 
for the live show and the visuals for the, the record artwork as well. You know, it's, it's important, I think. And you were in Brazil in two other opportunities. Uh, how is the reception of Brazil? Yeah, you know, they, they're really great around here. So we, we always get a really great response from Brazilian people, you know. They show us a lot of love and the, the concerts are very demonstrative and they're very passionate. Um, Latin America in general is very much like that for us. We have a really good relationship here with the fans here. Um, and, you know, we have great relationships with our fans all around the world, don't get me wrong. But yeah, Brazil has always been a very special place, very loud place to come. Gigs and traffic and you know <laughs> the beautiful the beautiful girls and the and the you know beautiful green everything and I don't know I always really really fancy the yeah, game. I'm happy but I got everything I need. <laughs> okay, good. And you sleeping with ghosts and uh, it's one uh, the most important and the most iconic albums of Placebo's career. It's a great one, yeah. And um, you try to somehow maintain a standard or a, a style since you... I think, well, as I said earlier, you know, each record ends up being a, a reaction to the previous one. And Super Mario Ghosts is an amazing record, you know. And, uh, but you can't write the same record twice, and you you shouldn't you shouldn't try. You know, if you're still doing the same songs in the same style 15 years later, uh, you know, 10 years later, so it's not really saying much about you, the creative person. People sometimes don't like change, and people, you know, and sometimes change doesn't always come out good. But I respect a band much more who's changing the sound. You know, Arctic Monkeys are one of those in the UK. A band called Arctic Monkeys. I'm not sure if you, if you know, but. They kind of went for this sort of um, very sort of indie Brit pop, uh, mm -hmm. uh, indie Brit rock type sound, jangly, and their sound really changed when Josh Allen came in and started producing. And I know, I remember hearing a lot of people being really upset about that, and they t didn't care. They just did their thing, and their records are brilliant, and, and they're a great band. I, I respect a band that that evolves uh -huh. and doesn't devolve. You know, you looking back to you all of a sudden trying to write something like that. It, it, it's not really our style, you know, we're a band, we're a band that always is looking for it and because of this I think we'll be able to make records better. And you know, you'll, you'll play some people and, and I think personally, I love this newest record, I think we were all in agreement that it's the, it's one of the best records since Sleeping with Girls. It's, it's, I mean it's one of, you know, personally our favourite from now we really, it's, it's my favourite record. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, since 94, the music world has changed a lot. Not only in England but around the world. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and how do you how do you evaluate the the production and the cons consumption of music since the early career? No, it's it's tough because technology has made people very impatient. Yeah. People get bored by that. Um, they don't, they don't, they, they don't, they don't want to sit around and listen to a record. They don't want to sit around and listen to four minutes of a song. You need two minutes, two minutes thirty for radio. Music being so available and so free, people are spoiled. They don't really, they don't really care to. Uh, they can just can't take a leave because it's everywhere. Um, it's put a lot of good people out of work. Put a lot of bands in the in the and so a lot of labels. I'm talking about, I'm talking a fair bit about this tonight as well. It's uh, it's really a shame. I miss the good old days. I'm 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 an old soul, young but young body type of thing, you know. And uh, and I just think that the good old days, you know, band goes, makes a record, you go out, you buy that record, you go see them live, and that's how it works. And it will keeps turning. There's no money coming in. People can't make records. People can't have. They can't feed themselves or their families. Taking on second jobs, all the you know, bands are having. It's so normal for bands to have two or three different projects now. You know, I got two different projects. I know Brian works on other stuff. So there's loads of other people and, and other bands do as well. Yeah. And but you know, it's it's like they can say that and say like, say that used to be better, but it's just the world evolving and things yeah. change. And I think you, you got to work with it. You got to start. You know, instead of just giving a record, giving a record with all this extra stuff as well. And, you know, you tour for longer and you just adjust, you know, we were fortunate enough to, to the band was fortunate enough to start when it did, people were still buying records. So, you know, but if you're a young band starting fresh, 
Good luck. I'm you know, really good luck. Your music will get out there via internet and Spotify, fan up and things like that. But how many records do you sell? You know, how, how are you even going to be able to afford to tour? You may be able to fill those places, but you can't even afford to get a van because because everyone's just been getting music for free. Yeah, they know your song, but you ain't getting paid for it. You know, it is a, it is a job. You wouldn't go to a bread maker and ask for a loaf of bread for free. So, yeah, I know, it's, everything changes, but you just kind of roll with it. And that's the best way to be. Don't be, I find myself sometimes being very grumpy about it. <laughs> and very, you know, all this new stuff is shit. But it's not. It's not. It's just life. <laughs> it's the music industry. It changes all the time. So I bet, you know, it'll, it'll come in circles. It'll revert back. It always does. They always find ways to make money. <laughs> I don't have to trust that. Anyway, sorry, I digress. <laughs> and uh, what bands stand out today in your opinion? Some new bands that stand out. Well, oh. Uh, Just any bands. Yeah. Well, um, there's, my favorite band of all time is a band called The Walkman. The Walkman, um, they're from the United States, and it's just very honest music. I have every record, that I'm the biggest fan. Uh, a band called Skaters, which is quite new, their new record is fantastic. There's a lot of great music coming out nowadays. It, it, the standard of music has gone up, the, the sales have gone down, but the quality has gone up. You, know, you have a million bands, and they all sound great and write proper tunes. You know, back in the day, it was a bit, you know, selection, wasn't it? And because everything's been done, now people are getting more creative, so that's wonderful. But you just say it's not the sales really. But there's a lot of bands that are potent. Uh, the Death Cab Q is amazing. Radiohead's always been amazing. Um, the Sigur Ross's new record is brilliant. Da Daft Punk's new record is really good. Queens of the Stone Age, that's the band you gotta see live. They're really, really good. So these are some of the bands I think are great. So, you know, Break the Mold, you know, Arctic Monkey, another great band. Really great live, great records. People that make music properly because they love to, not because they're trying to make a product for something stupid, you know what I mean? I'm not a big fan of auto-tuned of auto -tuned pop. That stuff for me is killing the industry. So, that's what I, that's, that's what I think about you asked. Sorry, I didn't mean to be too mean there. <laughs> Sorry. And what about Brazilian do you know some band? Do you like? Um, I know Soulfly and Sepultura, which is what Joe was really open up for. That was pretty cool, because Sepultura was like, wah, wah. You know, it was uh, other Brazilian, Brazilian music. Not not too much. Not a lot of it. Um, we don't, not a lot of it comes over, so I only know a couple you know, Brazilian yeah. stuff. But um, I'm always willing to, to hear it. I always like finding new music, you know. Yes. So, thank you very much. Oh, thank we you. wish you a great concert today. Cheers, thanks very much.